Yesterday I started talking about converting customary units and we talked about how we have customary units of weight, we have customary units of length or distance, and then we also have units to measure volume or capacity. The problems that I gave you on math space were all weight problems and they all had to do with converting pounds to ounces. So part of today's lesson is going to be a little bit of review and then the second part we're going to jump to lesson 12.4 and in 12.4 we're going to talk about customary units of volume. Okay I'm looking at lesson 12.3 and this is for Tuesday March 31st. Ounces and pounds are customary units of weight. How does the size of a pound compare to the size of an ounce? And again, we already talked about this a little bit, but we are using a number line right here to show us a pound, which is the top half of the number line, and how ounces compare to that pound. So the number line from zero to one is one pound. And then within that number line, we have 16 ounces. I can illustrate that in another way as well. So step one says use a colored pencil to shade one pound on the number line. So I'm going to shade one pound. So zero to one. That's one pound right there. Then on step two, it says use a different colored pencil to shade one ounce on the number line. So one ounce is just right there. So you can see that one ounce is a lot smaller than one pound. You need 16 ounces to equal a pound. Step three then asks us to compare the size of one pound to the size of one ounce. So you need blank ounces to make blank pound. So you need 16 ounces to make one pound. So one pound is 16 times as heavy as one ounce. Now I'm looking at the next page and I'm going to just continue doing more of the same here. Let's look at the example problem and it says Nancy needs five pounds of flour to bake pies for a festival. She has 90 ounces of flour. How can she determine if she has enough flour to bake the pies? This is really similar to the problem that we did yesterday with the bracelets. So let's just go ahead and follow the steps right here. Step one says make a table that relates pounds to ounces. They did the first one for us, which is one pound equals 16 ounces. And then we have two pounds. So how many ounces go into two pounds? Let's zoom in here a little bit. Now I can see my chart a little more closely. How many ounces go into two pounds? So right over here, I have two pounds times 16. So that means that I'm doing two times 16. Well, I happen to know that two times 16 is 32. So I have 32 ounces, which I can abbreviate as OZ. Let's go ahead and write the 32 in my table and let's do three pounds. So three pounds is gonna be three times 16. Well, I don't know what three times 16 is off the top of my head. So I'm going to work it out right over here. Three times six is 18. Three times one is three plus one more is four. So I know that that's gonna be 48 ounces. So 48. Then I have four pounds, four pounds times, well, times 16. They're all gonna be times 16. So again, I'm gonna work it out over here. And I have 16 times four. So four times six is 24, four times one is four, plus two is six. So I get 64 ounces. So I'll write in 64 on my table. Let's go back to the original question real quick. She has five pounds of flour and she needs 90 ounces. So we wanna know if five pounds is equal to or greater than 90. So back to our table, we have five pounds, oops, I'm red now. We have five pounds 
times 16. So I'll work it out again over here. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. And I'm going to get 80 ounces. So I can write that over here as well. 80 ounces. So let's answer our original problem now over in step two. Compare 90 ounces to five pounds. Well, 90 ounces is 90 ounces, and five pounds equals 80 ounces. So 90 is obviously bigger than 80, which means 90 is greater than five pounds. So I'll just say greater than, or I could say more than. So Nancy does not have enough flour to make the pies. Man, what a bummer for Nancy. All right, I'm going to work through a couple problems over here. And just like yesterday, I'm going to be paying close attention to my customary unit uh, conversion chart over here. And you'll notice that for customary units of weight in this chapter and on math space, we're only looking at pounds, ounces, and tons. So there are other customary units of weight, but they're not very commonly used for the average person, but there are several other customary units of weight. But for us, we really just have to look at these three. Okay, let's look at number one. Four tons equals how many pounds? Well, we haven't really talked about tons yet, but if I look at my conversion chart, I know that one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So if I have four tons, I have four times 2,000. Now, I don't really have to work that out as a long multiplication problem. I just know that four, and I'm going to work it out down here on the bottom so you can see it, times two equals eight. And then I add on those other three zeros. So I know that four tons is the same as 8,000 pounds. Let's go ahead and look at number two. Five tons, how many pounds is that? Well, I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I just did, except this time I'm gonna do five times 2,000. So five times two is 10. And then I add on my three zeros, so I have 10,000 pounds. That's a comma right there, not a decimal. All right, number three, six pounds is how many ounces? So let me go back and look at my conversion chart. In my conversion chart, I have one pound is 16 ounces. So six pounds, I'm just going to go six times 16 which I happen to know is 96. I'm going to stop right there, but remember that when you're converting any customary unit, it's really important that you're looking at the conversion chart or you're referring back to it. With customary units of weight, you really only have three different things to think about, and you can probably remember that one pound is 16 ounces, and one ton is 2,000 pounds, so you may not even need to look back at the chart. Okay, let's check out volume. On chapter 12.4, we're looking at customary units of liquid volume. Our essential question is, how can you use models to compare customary units of liquid volume? We're gonna use the models to help us convert one unit into another type of unit. Liquid volume is the measure of the space a liquid occupies. Some basic units for measuring liquid volume include one cup, fluid ounces, the pint, quart, or the gallon. Our book also uses half gallons, like we mentioned yesterday. There are sort of two different charts right here. We have one down here, and then we have one up here. They do have some different units in them, but they're also just different in the way that we can look at them. Let's look at this first one up here. We have one cup, and one cup is the same as eight fluid ounces. So a measuring cup, the measurement, one cup is eight fluid ounces. If I have one pint, I have the equivalent of two cups. Okay, let's stop right there for a second. If one pint has two cups, how many fluid ounces would be in one pint? 
if you said 16 fluid ounces, then you're catching on. All right, then we have one quart, and one quart is the same as four cups. I'm going to ask you the same question. How many fluid ounces would be in one quart? Well, it would be eight times four, and we would end up with 32 fluid ounces in a quart. So using a chart like this, you can convert units all different ways. Down here, we have another chart, and uh, I'm going to zoom in for this one. On this chart down here, we have gallons across the top, and then all of the other units below one gallon are related to that gallon. So I'm going to skip half gallon, and I'm going to go right to the quart. So across the top, I have one gallon. How many quarts do I have below that one gallon? Well, one, two, three, four. So that tells me that there are four quarts in one gallon. Let's look at another measurement below the gallon and uh, let's check out pints. So how many pints are in one gallon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that tells us that there are eight pints in one gallon. Looking at a chart like this is really useful though because if I wanted to know how many pints are in a quart, I can just look at a small portion of this chart and compare. So here's my quart, if you can see that I'm outlining it in black. How many pints are in that quart? One, two. So one quart is made up of two pints. Let's go even a little further. How many cups are in one quart? One, two, three, four cups in a quart. And then we know that each cup is made up of eight fluid ounces. So if I wanted to know how many fluid ounces are in a quart, I would do eight times four, which is what we did earlier. So that's how we use these conversion charts. I'm gonna post a picture of this conversion chart on our class website so that you can use it while you're doing the math space questions today, if necessary. Let's look at another question here. And this one's, again, very similar to what we looked at um, earlier today and yesterday. And it's saying that Serena needs to make three gallons of lemonade for the lemonade sale. She has a powder mix that makes 350 fluid ounces of lemonade. How can she decide if she has enough? So we want to know if 350 fluid ounces is equal to or more than three gallons. So we have to figure out how many fluid ounces are in a gallon, and then we can find out if, if she needs to make three gallons of lemonade, does she have enough lemonade mix? So we're gonna work our way up to that. And we're gonna start with step one. Use the model on page 659, find the relationship between gallons and fluid ounces. Down here I have the conversion chart. So let's have a look. One gallon is the same as how many cups? So remember, I have the gallon across the top, and then I'm going to go all the way down to the cups. So there's a lot of cups in a gallon. Let's figure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there are sixteen cups in a gallon. So I'm going to need to fill that in up here. Okay. Then it says one cup is the same as how many fluid ounces? You might remember that, but you can always look right down here. One cup is the same as eight fluid ounces. So I'll go ahead and fill that in. Eight fluid ounces. Then the next one says one gallon equals blank cups times blank fluid ounces. So that's one gallon is the same as 16 cups, and each cup has eight fluid ounces. So we have 16 times eight. So one gallon is how many fluid ounces? So 16 times eight is what we have to figure out. I have 16 times eight. So again, the 16 is, there are 16 cups in a gallon, and each one of those cups is made up of eight fluid ounces. So after we solve this, we will know how many fluid ounces are in one gallon. So eight times six 
is 48. And 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. So we have 128 ounces, or fluid ounces, in 1 gallon. 1, 2, 8. Now I can fill in this chart in step 2. Gallons. 1 gallon equals 128 fluid ounces. 2 gallons, well, that would be 2 times 128 which is 256. I'm just doing the math for you on a calculator here. So I don't have to make this video any longer than it needs to be. And then finally, three gallons times 128. So three times 128. So three times 128 is 384, 384. Let's go back to our original question. Serena needs to make three gallons of lemonade, and she only has enough powder for 350 fluid ounces. We found out that three gallons is the same as 384 fluid ounces. So she does not have enough mix to make three gallons. She only has enough mix to make 350 fluid ounces, and she needs a little bit more mix so that she can make 384 gallons. Um, I think the word problem here is a little bit confusing, but the general idea with using a conversion chart like this hopefully should be pretty understandable to people. Let's do just a couple more, and then you guys will be ready for math space. I'm looking at number one. It says, compare the size of a quart to the size of a pint. Use a model to help. So I'm gonna look at my uh, conversion chart over here and I can see that one quart is how many pints? So one quart is the same as two pints. So that means that this would be one pint and this would be one pint. Uh, so one quart is two times as much as one pint. All right, number two, two pints is the same as how many cups? Let me go back and look at my conversion chart because I don't know my customary units very well. Um, how many pints, so how many cups are in a pint? So let's look for the pint over here. And a pint has two cups. So if I have two pints, I'm going to have four cups. All right, number three. We have three gallons. How many quarts are in three gallons? So how many quarts are in one gallon first? So one gallon has four quarts. So for this, we have to do three times four. So we would have 12 quarts. And the final problem that I'm going to do with you is going to be number four. I have six quarts, how many cups is that? So let's go over here and find quarts. How many cups are in one quart? Well, one quart is the same as four cups. So if I have six quarts, I need to do six times four. And I know that six times four is 24. It's really just a matter of looking at the conversion chart and using the conversion chart to change one thing into another thing and knowing what you need to multiply as well. All right, I have eight or nine problems on math space for everybody to try. I hope it goes well for you. And again, I'm gonna put a couple of these conversion charts up on the classroom. So make sure that you refer to them when you do math space.